Welcome back to another episode of Plug and Police. I'm your host, Bojack Horseman. I gotta take this off. It's not gonna work. What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Plug and Police. I'm your host, Massim Shaper. Today, we'll be investigating Shaper Box 3 by Cable Guys. Coincidentally, this came out pretty close to Infiltrator 2. Definitely nothing strange about that, which I would deem is its most avid competition. I recently gave Infiltrator 2 a 10 out of 10, the maximum score, so I'm curious how this sizes up next to that. According to their website, ShaperBox is your go-to tool for rhythmic inspiration, musical motion, mixing magic. Nine ShaperBox effects come together in one easy modern interface. Well, they always make it sound good on the website. Is it really that good though? ShaperBox 2 was pretty good, so I have high hopes, but is it better than Infiltrator 2? It's $89, it has a trial. They also wrote it's $300 with it crossed out though, and I'm wondering is this like a unison audio sort of thing, or is it normally $300? Because if it's actually $300, that's insane and way too high. Help, I'm being held hostage, and they said the only way they'll let me go is if you like and subscribe. All right, so what's new in this version? Again, according to the website, Sorry, I gotta get all this out of the way before I get to the actual review. It's got easier waveform editing. You can trigger ShaperBox with any sound or track. It also has external sidechain view. You can see the waveform of your sidechain signal. Now it has a liquid shaper, which gives you flanging and phaser modulation. It has a new enhanced browser. Now my first impressions with the changes are there's some pretty useful things here, but at the same time, it seems like not that much. It has me wondering if they rush us out the door in order to compete with Infiltrator 2, which came out like, I believe only a few weeks ago at this point. Because this does seem a little underwhelming. Although I believe it's only $29 to upgrade from ShaperBox 2, so that's not too bad. Okay, really quickly, I'm gonna give you guys a demo on what you can do with ShaperBox 3. I got two loops here, a melody loop and a drum loop. I'm gonna play you the dry versions of both real quick here. So yeah, just some quick loops I took from my Patreon loop pack. Could start with the preset and tweak it from there, but uh, you know what, we'll start from scratch here. So we'll take the drums, we'll take the time one here, click down to the different parts here, and get, you know, reverses, stutters, scratches, tapes, pitches, a pattern. Let's grab a pattern here. I like that one reverse sound here. So that's the main thing I'm gonna keep here. So I'm gonna get rid of these points here that I'm not a big fan of. So I'm just gonna turn it on for this second bar here. So you can get more complicated too if you want. You know, add some drive, liquid, filter, etc. I guess I'll draw in a few points, press 2x a few times, get rid of a few of these points. You can get a lot more complicated, obviously, if you'd like to. Usually, though, if I want to save time, I'll just, you know, mess with the presets. I may do that for the second one here. On the melody loop now, I may pick, like, a filter rhythm. It's pretty cool. Maybe mess with the multiband a bit. So I think that came out pretty sick with a minimal amount of work. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to show you guys a few demos here. Actually, that was a lie. I'm gonna show you guys one demo here. Massive Liar here. I use ShaperBox and everything within this beat here, including the master, and I also turn this synth into a Game Boy sounding ARP synth. My first thoughts with the UI is there's definitely some pros and cons to it. It has some things that are placed better than Infiltrator 2, and it has some things that are placed much worse than Infiltrator 2. One thing I really don't like is how the sync presets button is right next to the presets. I feel like that's not something you'd click very often, so it's kind of strange how close it is to the presets. That seems like something that you'd probably want to hide a little further in the menus. I don't know why it's in the top middle of the plugin, though, is what I'm saying. I feel like it doesn't need to be there. I feel like it'd make more sense to put a pick random preset button there, and there's no option to pick a random preset for what I can tell. One cool thing about the preset browser, though, is the ability to filter in and out different presets based on what effects you want in them, filter, noise, etc. One not cool thing is how it lacks the ability to lock any parameters while changing presets. I noticed this doesn't have as many effects as Infiltrator 2, and it also doesn't have as many presets as Infiltrator 2. ShaperBox 3 comes with 600 presets, and Infiltrator 2 has over 1,500. Remember, it was so many they, they couldn't actually count it. They just said over 1,500. One thing that makes this stand out a bit from Infiltrator 2, though, is the multi-band feature. You can have different effects on different bands, and you can also affect each band differently with the same effect. I don't find this to be something I would use 
use too often, but it's definitely cool with filtering. If you're doing some sort of filter, stutter, or uh, pattern effect, because then you can have different patterns playing on different bands. One feature I like about ShaperBox is how you can visually see what are the other effects they're doing in the background while you were working on a specific effect. Overall, I didn't have any problems with the way it functioned. It also seems pretty CPU efficient as I was able to stack many of them into a single project without any issue at all. Again though, I also have a pretty good computer. The ability to use MIDI or audio to trigger a shaper is great, but it's something that's expected at this point in my opinion. Now, is this better than Infiltrator 2? Uh, that's hard to say, like def everyone has their own preferences. I definitely prefer Infiltrator 2 for the most part, and the one reason is because it has a sequencer. You can sequence different effects on different beats with Infiltrator 2, while you cannot do that with ShaperBox. But again, the one thing you can do with ShaperBox that you can't do with Infiltrator is the multiband feature. Although I'm sure it's, a, it's possible to achieve both of these things with some clever automation and you know, it would be a pain in the ass, but is that really what you wanna spend your Monday doing? To me personally, it's a little bit better for how complex it is. Some parts of ShaperBox's design are pretty good in my opinion, and other parts of it, not so much. I do appreciate that both of them let you do a randomized waveform feature. Basically the way you can randomize waveforms in ShaperBox is it just moves around the points that are already there and you can press times two if you wanna add more points. You can just add more points and hit randomize, add more points, randomize, etc. There's also more presets with Infiltrator 2 and I generally find myself reaching, well, I reach for presets pretty often, not as much with mixing and mastering, but when I'm looking for effects, uh, sometimes with synths and whatnot. So, you know, the more presets, the better, as long as there's no drop in quality and there's definitely no drop in quality with the presets in Infiltrator 2. I would say the preset quality is about the same for both of them. One thing that makes me prefer Infiltrator 2 a bit more is there's a vast number of effects. For instance, Infiltrator 2 has some different spectral effects. Those are some of my favorites to go for. I don't think Shaper Box 3 is bad by any means. I just think Infiltrator 2 is a little bit better. And for that reason, I give Shaper Box 3 a eight out of 10. They're also in a similar price range too, so. You know, that's worth considering as well. It really depends if how much they raise the price on this though. If it actually goes up to $300, then you know, I may lower that score down to like a seven or a six even because $300 for this is insane. Uh, 89 or whatever it was, that's not too bad, at least for what you can do with it. That's it for this video. I'm your host, Master Shaper. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out my Twitter, my Instagram, and my second channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe, please. They're still not letting me out of this room. What is wrong with you? Why haven't you hit the subscribe button? This isn't good, man. Do you know what they're going to do to me? Probably nothing. But still, you should do it. If I get to 25,000 by the end of the year, that means I have to shave my head. That means I could cosplay as Decap or Anthony Fantano. Don't you want to see that? <sighs> I mean, I actually don't really want it to happen. But it seems like it might happen anyways, so... Subscribe or don't. I don't really care. Anyways, happy Halloween. I actually meant to film the whole video on Halloween in this outfit, but... That video was supposed to come out the day before, and... Yeah, things got messed up, so... Had to splice together. Sorry, guys. Hope you forgive me.